level of anxiety about wanting to be your own person and then a certain level of guilt and shame when you do actually try to be. Welcome to Therapy Explained. My name is Anise Cantor. I'm the therapist of color for people of color and your very own mental health cheerleader. I post videos about all things mental health because I believe that mental health information should be free and accessible to everyone. If you agree and would like to help spread the word, make sure to subscribe and share this video. Every video also comes with its own cheat sheet that I make available to you on Instagram, so make sure that you're following me there at Talk Therapy to get access to yours. You know, welcome to Shop Yana Play Entertainment, and today I'm um, speaking about generational curses, breaking generational cycles. You were just listening to Therapy Explained, and you can also follow her on social media at to to therapy. So um, basically, I'm going to talk about breaking generational curses. Generational curses go back way back years and years ago. And they have caused a lot of disruption within all of our families within centuries and years and thousands of years, you hear? So me talking about breaking generational cycles is a really touchy subject that we all need to be aware of. Okay, just had to warm up a little bit. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're talking about generational curses. I am your host, Shakamanda Gomez. Please follow me on Instagram, and also you can check out my YouTube page, and also subscribe for more. What is a generational curse? According to the Gospel Coalition, a generational curse describes as cumulative effect on a person or things that have that our ancestors have done, believed or practiced in the past, and the consequences of an ancestor's actions, beliefs, and sins were passed down to the next generation. Yes, this is Shakamanda, G-O-M-E-S, Comas. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate everyone. Yes, so our families have the greatest influence on our development as we're growing up, including the development of our patterns of sin. Some people even assert that family or generational curses are passed down along generational lines. This belief comes from an Old Testament passage which says that God punishes the children and their children for sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations, which is in Exodus 34, verse 7. Whether or not families inherit spiritual curses, it is obvious that patterns of sin are passed down through families. Everyone sins, but just as culture, ethnicity, 
gender steer our patterns of sin in a particular direction. So do our families. And no matter what, we inherit, inherit some of those traits and many of those traits and preference from our parents that aren't, uh, always aren't a positive influence on ourselves or others. When we acquire a sinful habit or belief that negatively affects our lives or those around us, this is known as a generational curse. It is a shadow side of behavior passed down through the generations, but it's possible to break the cycle of suffering. So said, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shakalanda, G-O-M-E-S, Shakalanda Play Entertainment. And for everyone who is stepping in on the conversation, we are speaking about generational curses. And we're going to start with black parents. Our black parents said when we were growing up, it was like the discipline was very extreme. You understand pulling out a belt and whipping your child, thinking that you're punishing your child or, you know, not sparing the rod. That's totally observed. I feel that that's how the generational curses continue. I understand you're not supposed to spare the rod, spoil the child, but in a sense... That's where we all come from. Just like back in the back in the slavery times when the slaves would beat the father in front of his young children and the mother to make him submit to duties and even sexual pleasures. We have to realize that just beating our children is causing trauma. It causes them to want to rebel. Or when they're having those when they're having those problems and issues at home, they will go out into the street and become bullies or they will take out their anger on someone that is innocent or weaker than how than than them because they feel weak at the moment. So we need to stop beating our children and chastising them when they need it the most and speak to our children. You don't have to beat your child in order to get the word across. You can speak with your child and it will go through even better. They will be, have a better understanding. When I was growing up, we you know, went through a lot of different things and um, that'll be for another show, but um, I just wanna talk about generational curses. Us, uh, you know, parents beating their children and um, putting them through strenuous situations, you know, and being left at home alone or, you know, our parents going out partying, the baby boomers from the 50s and 60s and even the 40s. So basically, we don't have to do exactly what our ancestors or what our last generation has done to raise us. We have to open up our minds, bodies, and our souls in our spirit to realize that these things are very toxic to put in our children's lives. We need to start to speak to our children in a better tone instead of cursing and grabbing belts and shoes and all different types of things we've all gotten beaten with growing up. And what does that do? It does help some children in a way to moderate their behavior, but you have to speak to your child before you chastise them. Because if you don't, you can create a rebel. And that rebellious spirit will definitely take on 
the last generation and will continue the generational curse. The generational curses have been going on, like I said, for years and years and years. And we need to start focusing on how to raise our children in a better manner and teach them and spend time with them and help them be self-sufficient and help them be successful in life. Help them choose the way that they needed to be, the way they need to be guided. You understand? Because if we don't do that, they will continue on from the last generation and we'll continue on with the shenanigans. That's something that we don't want to happen to our children, to our youth. These generational curses, you can't look back and say, because my mother was an alcoholic, I'm going to be an alcoholic, or you know, make excuses from the last generation, because we have to be better than the last generation. Whatever the last generation has let us down in so many ways in different families all across the universe. So we need to not let our our generation, our next generation coming out of us from the 80s and 90s kids and the early 2000s, we need to take on a responsibility to break the chain of generational curses. Or this is going to be a continuation of trauma with the different children and different family members all the way around. So there's no getting away and getting away from generational curses if you continue on with the shenanigans. And also, you know, we grew up in an era, a lot of us grew up in an era where we had, uh, you know, where we all would go and, um, you know, spend time with our family members and our, our family would drink or party and you know, spend time um, with each other. So we would watch them drink and smoke and have fun. And, you know, we look at that as young children and we don't see any substance, but we want to do it so bad as we grow because we're like, okay, I want to be, you know, I want to be an adult soon. looks like they're having fun, but actually that's just continuing the last generation's curse. There's nothing wrong with having a good time and going out and having a nice drink here and there or you know, um, getting together and congregating. But the thing is, is that we need to teach our children the difference on doing things in moderation. Everything's in moderation. When you drink, you drink in moderation. If you smoke, smoke in moderation, which isn't good for you. Neither is good for you. But we grew up on those things, watching those things. And those things became a stigma to us as we grow. We start to pick up the same things that we see growing up. That right there should show you that we need to break the chain. Eventually, if you or I am smart enough to realize the difference with these generational curses, you won't let anyone or anything come in between you and the way that you're growing your child, the way that you're growing yourself, the way that you're healing yourself from these generational curses. You will let no one come in between that space and that positive energy that you have going on in your life. If it means cutting off family members, if it means cutting off friends, if it means cutting off, but we're talking about family and generational curses. But if you have to cut off family members, you have to, then do it. Because that is how we break the chain. We don't continue on with the same shenanigans and the same generational curse um, vibration because we want to be better and we want to teach our children to be better because the world would eat them alive. Also, um, I notice that in a lot of families worldwide that a lot of parents don't have patience. The thing is, if you have more patience and you have more love in your heart and not, you know, trying to be so overly frustrated when it comes to dealing with everyday issues and everyday problems or everyday uh, recreational things, recreation, we have to learn how to separate some things from others. You understand what I'm saying? So in order to break generational curses, we don't have to pick up a belt the same way that our parents did. 
what happened it might have helped us in the mean in the, in the in the long term but on the other hand it was traumatizing to be beaten with a belt and not really spoke to on what you did wrong so all you feel is pain and sadness in your heart and that's generational curses starting all over again so is that what we want for our children, is that what we want for the next generation? We want the next generation to beat the children, to misguide them, for them to drink, to, for them to just have no morals and no goals and no, no understanding of life. I don't think, I think not. This thing has gotten way out of control. And sometimes also I've seen situations where children were adopted into another family and say the mother is a drug addict and then the a child is adopted into another family and doesn't grow with the mother and can still turn out to be a drug addict just like the mother without even living with it because it's a generational curse generational vibrations that are passed on from one soul and one spirit to the other but it's a fight. We, when we know right from wrong, and not just knowing right from wrong, but when we are conscious and we know better, then there's no excuse for us doing our jobs as parents, even as a life coach or, you know, um, therapists. Any of those things. You know, we have to learn how to be stable and how to stabilize all of this and how to cast out all these demonic, evil spirits and not accept generational curses at all. We're going to bun them out because generational curses have been going on for years and years and we tend to accept them because of our last generation. I would really like to hear everyone's thoughts, anyone's thoughts. So here on Spreaker, this is a podcast here. Um, it will definitely be going right to my page with Shock Yona Play Entertainment. You can also find me on Facebook, Shakamanda, G-O-M-E-S, spelled with a C, Shaka. And just follow on the journey. Because this definitely is a big problem in our society, in the where, where we're living now, and uh, in the times that we're in, we really need to step our game up. Because if we don't, our children are going to follow in the footsteps of maybe the generation three or four times before us. You understand? So we have to make sure that they come out to be much better than we came out. So that means patience, love, consideration, and also acknowledgement on what the problem is when a child makes a mistake. There's males are not inside the, the, the homes anymore. There's all these single mothers. So a lot of single mothers get overwhelmed. And what, they, what do they do? They just run to beat their children because they're frustrated and they don't know how to deal with stress or to deal with you know, deal with uh, tight situations and stuff when it deals with children. But those that's, that's what I'm saying also, too, is breaking generational curses. If you feel like you don't have the patience, then we don't need to have children out here. You understand? So if you don't have patience to have a child, then you don't need to have a child because a child is not an animal and it shouldn't be treated like an animal. And abuse is very contagious, you understand? So if you abuse a child, a child is going to go try to abuse another child. And some children won't do that. But what I'm saying is that sometimes it can create uh, emotional and mental and spiritual distress and cause a lot of strain on young men and young women that are trying to learn in this world. But if you're beating them, they're not going to learn exactly what their problem, what the problem or what the issue was, they're just going to end up falling into the same thing over again 
and they're not going to understand until you actually sit them down. You're just going to keep beating them and beating them and beating them until they, until what? Just like the slave master used to beat the black men that were in, that were on the plantation in front of their families. No, we need to change this. That's where it all started. And it's a Willie Lynch letter also that we'll, we'll talk about on another show has a lot to do with it. Training and breaking the horse. That's how we're doing our children. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's cute at all. It really breaks my heart because these children are developing these beautiful minds and these beautiful souls and they're lost. And when they're being raised, we need to teach them awareness and talk to them about things instead of beating them. And generational curses also come from the the mothers and fathers, like some generational curses, some women will allow their children to be hurt by other men because they watched their mom or they have had some type of trauma in their life where they feel that they have to be submissive to a man or submissive to a woman either either way and not being submissive to your child, being submissive to your child and explaining and talking to them is the best option. And also, let me go back to the mothers and fathers and, and homes and fathers being missing in homes and other men coming in to fill in those places and being stepmoms or stepfathers that end up being abusive towards a child and the mother or father allows it. There's no way in the world that anyone on this planet should allow those things to happen. Those are signs of weakness. Those are signs of trauma that that person might have had that is allowing it to happen to their child. We have to do better than this. We really, really have to do better than this. Trauma is always going to be there, but there's also a healing that you can use also. You can heal from those things. Those things don't stick with you forever. And some people they do are so traumatized from from young from a young age by being beaten or you know treated very poorly or thrown out in the street or you know to where they rebel and they get mixed into the wrong crowd and they become in, come into a gang, you know they, they come excuse me they end up going into a gang or they go into peop, you know go to other peers and stuff like that and you know get themselves involved in things because they just feel a little bit of love from there that isn't home these are broken homes and that's where the generational curses start from broken homes you know? So, there's also, I want to read this to you all as well. There's a, a book, it's called Spare the Kids, Why Whipping Children Won't Save Black America. Okay? It's a drawing conclu- um, conclusion and considerable attention um, to everything, to these generational curses. All right. And I want you to check it out because it's very, very interesting. So the woman's name is Stacy Patton. She's a survivor of childhood whoopings that left her with long life physical and mental scars and a history of foster care. So Patton argues that the use of whipping by black parents is a legacy of slavery. She found no evidence that West African civilizations employ the type of ritualistic physical punishment that is practiced by some black parents today. So go check that out if you have a chance. All right, go check that book out. It's called Whipping of Black Kids to the Days of Slavery and Spare the Kids by Marie K. Cohen. Um, But the author is Stacey Patton. All right. She was uh, from Morgan State University. She's a journal. Um, she does journalism. Um, she's a journal. Uh, she's a professor of journalism. Yes, definitely. So I, I really have a problem with when I walk inside of a store and I see a child go the wrong way, and I see a, a mother slap the 
but Jesus out of their child because they've stepped out of order. I mean, come on. We don't need to do so much to our children. We can just teach them and nurture them and love them. That's what our hands are for. Our hands are for loving. They're not for whipping and beating. Um, you know, you have to spank your child, but there's a limit. You understand? Of punishment. And also, you ever hear the term, this is going to hurt me when it's going to hurt you? Yeah, I think we've all heard that. Not good. Okay, so I want to read you guys something else too. So, a woman here, her, uh, this is Stacy Patton again. Excuse me. All right, she says, my black middle-class adoptive mother often grumbled these words as she prepared to whoop me for getting dirty, mouthing off, rolling eyes, telling lies, or a number of other childhood misbehaviors. I still see myself standing naked in the living room of our suburban New Jersey house, my heart thundering as I watched her through the screen door, rustling through the thicket of shrubbery that grilled the front part porch. The switches she pulled smelled sweet and damp like the earth. Sometimes they whistled when she swung them. And I think we all know what that, I think we all have been there. That's some generational, generational curses, man. Right? And behavior. Other times they cut through the air like knives. They, the, they left long red whelps against the skin of my butt, back, arms, and legs. If I tried to shield my head or face, she grabbed me on one of my arms, raised the other head, and whipped me as I buckled in a circle. When the beating was over, we stood within reach of each other. Out of breath, our hair a mess, her first words always were the same. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. I wouldn't look at her as I slid my clothes over my stinging skin and bent to pick up the broken branches. By the time I was 12, I was in a foster state care system. I still carry the scars, fleshy, royal, the narrative, um, fleshy, royal, that narrates the story of my childhood. It is a common one. Unfortunately, my adoptive mother and generations of black parents like her honestly believe that whipping children is a pillar of responsibility of black parenting. Today, black parents are still about twice as likely as white and Latino families to use corporal punishment on the children. I've heard many black people attribute their successes or the fact that they weren't in jail on drugs or dead to the beatings they received as children. But if a whoop but if whipping children kept black people out of prison or safe from abusive cops, there would be no mass incarceration or police brutality. If beatings were a success, black people would be ruling the world. After spending years in therapy, studying the history of corporal punishment and writing a doctoral dissertation on the well-orchestrated matrix of Jim Crow express, expression, excuse me, oppression, that trapped black children at every developmental milestone. I now have a better understanding of why my adoptive mother punished me the way she did. Before white America was enslaved, millions of Africans, whippings were not a parenting tool embraced by my ancestors. In fact, there is no evidence that ritualistic, um, that ritualistically, physical punishment of children existed in pre-colonial um, colonial West African cultures, where children were viewed as sacred and pure than adults, and sometimes even as reincarnated ancestors from gods. It is a European idea that children are born in sin and should have the devil beaten out of them, a rod of correction, that brutality cascaded over the cultures through slavery, colonism, and religious, religious indoctrine. See what I mean? So that's what I mean. It should not be surprising then that American slaves who endured trauma of their own beatings inherited their oppressors' violence and for centuries passed down these parenting beliefs. This is one of the saddest, saddest untold stories in history. The way in which the victims of racism in oppression and violence have hurt the bodies of our own children in effort to protect them from a hostile society. It's crazy. 
So we definitely need to do better when it comes down to our children, raising our children. You don't have to put your hands up to your child and beat them in order to teach them. All it's doing is just creating them, uh, 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 creating space for them in prison, creating space for them in the jail cells, creating prison, uh, creating um, tension when they go out into the world around other children. Is creating hostility and sadness. So when these things happen, it's hard for some of these young people that turn into adults to actually erase these feelings or erase this this hideous... Just It's just so sad because I personally can say I grew up as a child that endured a lot of those things as well. And... I went through a rebellious stage and we all went, went, go through a rebellious stage, but it was a real rebellious stage. And it also caused a lot of grief and stress and strain growing up because I didn't understand what I was being whipped for because I wasn't explained to what I was whipped for. So I would do it over and over again. When you're young, you're going to keep com- com- uh, 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 keep doing the same thing over. You're going to keep repeating the process over and over, especially if someone hasn't sat down and spoke to you and said, hey, I don't want you to do this. You know, like, let's say perhaps uh, you tell your child, do not go into my refrigerator. Do not go into the refrigerator and grab that soda. That's for later, such and such and such. So then you come back from a long day or whatever. You go into your refrigerator and you see half of it's gone. You just grab a belt and you just go whip your child and say, what did I tell you about my about drinking that or, you know, drinking that soda or whatever the case may be? Instead of explaining or talking and say, OK, you know what? Let me tell you something. You can raise your voice. You can really raise your voice and look at your child and they can you can also intimidate them to get them to understand exactly what you're saying. You understand you don't have to put your hands on your child and beat the blood out of your child in order for them to understand what they did was wrong. They know they were wrong. So what you can do is you can use punishment. Take something that they really like away from them or, or you know, um, make them do some type of chore, you know, around the house. And if they do it again, then you can give them uh, uh, repercussions and put them on punishment. You don't always have to put your hands on your child. That is abuse. That's totally out of this out of this world. Yes, we all have spanked our children's here our children here and there. And I understand that because that's part of growing pains. But that's the thing, growing pains. There's too much pain in our families, in our generations, and it won't stop and it keeps continuing. We have to learn when it's supposed to stop. You understand? And we all have to do this together because if we keep if if there can be there's a there can be a million people say a million people here and 50% of them have not whipped their hands they 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 practice you know punishment or whatever then you have another half that can make the wrong wrong decisions and then they're wild you know we we can we all have to work together within one unit to raise these children because we're gonna, what's gonna happen is those, the, the up, there's gonna be a clash because there's gonna be a lot of hurt and pain, and a lot of children that are out there ready to hurt innocent, you know, and they turn into adults, they turn into killers and murderers, and uh, they become abusive or they inflict pain on others because of the pain that they've endured in their life, and they don't know how to get away from it, so they stick with that uh, with it when they become adults. So when they even go into relationships, they cannot even cope in relationships because of all of those scars that they've endured during their life and during the process of breaking a slave. Because that's basically what's happening happening here is that they're breaking, you know, our, our people, our generation, us as parents, we don't need to break our children like the men, like the black men were beaten and broken back in the slavery days. So if we turn that around and put it on our own kids, guess what's going to happen? It's going to make them rebellious. Um, some, some it does do good for, because we have some parents that do sit down and they speak with their children in the right manner, and they 
let them know, hey, you know what? This is what's going on. And this is going to be your punishment today. I told you not to do this. And I told you, you know, and just basically kind of explain to them. And like I said, take something away from them and, um, you know, just try to find another alternative of punishment instead of beating and hurting our children. We have to stop hurting our children um, and we need to start protecting them more. All right. It's not working by beating our children. It's not. And worse, it really, really, really gives the slave master's logic that it's the slave master's logic in your brain that you have to hit your child in order to comply for them to comply. You understand? We need to we need to stop teaching children that obedience is their greatest virtue, especially when we brace for the possibility of more systematic racial devastation, we need young people who push boundaries and become the kinds of adults who will not let themselves be victimized. You understand? Yeah, the violence that from black children they experience, you know what I'm saying? It's the, the, the violence that black children experience um, from triggered happy cops in the streets, in cities all over the world, you know, it's because the the home is interconnected to that situation. And it's all strange and it's bitter fruit from the same tree. I just ask that the, the black parents stop abusing your children, stop assisting in de- devaluing our children. Okay? Instead, we must make black childhood the antidote to centuries of racism, racism. It's been centuries and centuries. What are we beating our children for? What do we have these generational curses continue on from one generation to the next generation to the next generation? When is, when are we going to stop this? And some parents who can't hold it together and they lose their patience, you might need to get some counseling because that's the that's what I'm saying is a lot of parents who know that they don't have the pay, pay a lot of people before they become adults um we know right from wrong so when you have children you bring children into this world you have to bring them into this world to teach them you know patience love and to be stabilized and to be successful and smart you know and independent and self-sufficient it's not about beating your child. You're going to beat your child like a runaway slave. You understand? Literally. And expect for your child to listen, to grow up and have great morals. That person, that child is going to be traumatized. Even as an adult, you still feel trauma. Because it's something you can't come away from. Because those are your golden years growing up. So when a mother isn't paying attention to their child and allowing their child to be abused by another person that's in the house or a father allowing the same thing to happen to the children in their house and allowing abuse from a mother, either or it goes, it's wrong because that's a generational, that's a generational curse. Those are still putting generational uh, vibration on these children. These children didn't ask to be here, but we have to do the best that we can to, to make sure that we nurture them. Beating them is like the easy way out. That's you being frustrated and not being able to handle yourself emotionally and spiritually to to, to deal with your child, to explain and, and talk to them about what's right and what's wrong. You understand? Yeah, man. So you just have to definitely, we have to kick all of this negative energy. We have to kick this generational these generational curses out, and we don't accept them just because someone else's. Uh, say, if your 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 father was a um, a big boss or some some big um, drug dealer or something like that, and you grow up around that environment, you're gonna grow up in around that environment wanting to do the same thing because this was embedded in you because this is what they put in you, just like if. You are around negative energy growing up. You're going to grow up with negative energy the same way and bring that into your generation of children in the way how you grow. 
But if you know right from wrong and you've been through generational curses and you've seen all these things happen and you didn't keep your eyes open and then you just go and get frustrated and lose your mind and just kind of lose it and just whip your children and, you know, um, don't spend time with them and, and try to tell them exactly what the problem is. You're just creating more space for the prison system to, to lock them up and, and, and also for more prison space and jail space for them so that they can get locked up for beating on someone else because they're very upset about them being abused at home. Everything starts at home. Everything starts within you and to give to your child to benefit from that. And also, us as adults, we need to kick the generational curses away because our children watch us. And everything we do, everything we say, and if they see no substance around them, they're not going to have substance when they grow up. If they see uh, someone smoking cigarettes, they might pick up a cigarette one day because they've seen it in their face because these are influential things that's been around them. So we need to definitely open up our eyes and realize that we are beating our black children further into the legacy of slavery. It's crazy. So, yeah, I just need you all to go check out um, this book by Stacey Patton. Okay? Whooping children won't save black America or outside of America as well. We need to stop having sexified things around our children and stop allowing our children to be abused emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Because guess what? They're going to pass on those same traits, uh, however you raise them, onto the next generation. And in the world that we're living in right now, we need more stability than ever. Way more stability than ever. So, you know, this is a situation I wanted to speak about because we all have dealt with trauma or some type of something in our life that has changed us to make us better or to make us worse or is something that we learn from and we're going through it to change all of the disruption that our ancestors left for us. We definitely have some work to do. So this is Shakamanda Gomez, Black Star Radio, Shakyana Play Entertainment. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is Shakyana Play Entertainment and... Also, I just want to thank everyone who has taken the time out to listen to this podcast and um, be be on the lookout because we have a lot more to talk about. We're going to talk about generational curses part two when it comes down to the emotional abuse or bringing a lot of different or women. Uh, basically, um, what we're going to what I'm going to do is the next show is going to be generational curses part two. It's going to be about parents more so mothers who allow a lot of men to come into their homes and um, the children end up being abused and things like that. So if anyone has any thoughts or comments on any shows, anything, upcoming shows um, or upcoming podcasts that would be great to talk about, please let me know. I hope everyone has enjoyed this conversation. And remember, we cannot change our children by beating them. We can only change them by helping them learn and nurturing them to be more stable and giving them more love and security. We have to protect our children. We have to make sure that they're vigilant at all times of their surroundings. Yes, Jano. God bless everyone. I hope you have a blessed weekend that's coming. And I love Aluna. Thank you.